In this video I'm going to show you how to use an Atmos Studio program that I've written making use of timer 1 and that can change your pulse width modulation if you read the ADC voltage. So let me go to the program. Well, before I go to the program, this is eventually where I want to, to apply it. Variable voltage in, adjustable voltage in, that determines what my duty cycle will be and that will also determine what is my duty cycle. Yeah, uh, you can actually see the effect on the, on the oscilloscope there. So if I can go to my program, like I've said, I'm making use of Atmos Studio or Microchip Studio. What I've done here is I have just created a status a status byte, status char, to indicate if the level was a 1 or if the level was a 0. So if it was a 0, I will put 0. If it was a 1, I will put hex FF, all the bits being 1. Unfortunately, in... Uh, in this Atmos Studio program, you cannot have a single bit as a flag, so I'm using a byte or a char as a flag. So in my program, I've declared a few uh, integers, and uh, I'll come back to this one here. This is my interrupt uh, subroutine, in interrupt for timer 1 if it rolls over. So let's go to the main program. As I've said, I, what I'm doing with this thing is I am basically going to adjust the output voltage or the output duty cycle to an LED being connected to pin number 5 uh, of the Arduino. So with this I'm setting pin number 5 to a 1 which makes it an output. Uh, it is connected to the LED in any case. Uh, with this statement here I'm making port C bit 0 an input uh, for ADC 0. This is a standard because I'm making use of a 16 megahertz crystal, I have to put ADC SRA being equal to hex 87. That makes sure that the frequency is less than uh, 200 kilohertz. Um, yeah, so this is what it should be. Uh, AD max is 40. Again, what uh, that means is I'm going to make use as a VRF outside of 5 volts. And the output is also then right justified. So, in this case, what I've done here is I've just set up a value, just a start value. It, it could have been any value, but this is just a start value. And I have also made pin B a 5, and I've just set the status is it is FF or then, or then a high status. So, this is just, this has got nothing to do with the program, the rest of the program. It's just a starting point to start somewhere, make your output a high, and indicate that it's high. Uh, and you could have started here anywhere. It could have been less or more, doesn't matter. Um, what's important here is TC, TCC R1A, which is 0, 0. That means it's in normal mode and it's internal. It's in other words, in a timer mode. And TCC R1B, which is 0, 1, which means I, uh, the timer must start and the prescaler is 1 to 1. Um, in this specific case here, I'm activating timer 1 interrupt. So should timer 1 roll over uh, in normal mode, then it will definitely jump to the interrupt service routine. And of course, this, is, this statement here is just making bit number 7 in S register a high, which enables all the selected interrupts. So this section here is uh, reading the ADC at start the conversions the conversion of the ADC so this is where it will start and convert and this next line here is just waiting for the conversation or sorry the conversion to finish so as soon as the conversion finishes um, this flag ADIF will become a 1 and it will automatically be reset it because it's it was now activated the interrupt section was activated so it will automatically reset you don't have to do that so, because I <coughs> am going to simulate this program, I will not, I will show you later on, but I will not do it now. I will not read um, the ADCL, I, I will not read the ADC's low value or the ADC's high output value because uh, this is a simulation. This uh, I can maybe change it at some other point, uh, but for simulation wise, I just started off by saying, let's assume. The low is hex 29 and the high is hex 1, well, hex 1. 
Um, the reason why I use basically a value of 1, 2, 9, that's the, the combined value. Uh, as you can see here, I, I basically combine them here uh, into a single value, which is hex 129. That's exactly the same as a decimal value of 297, which uh, in my previous video I have said, let's start with the assumption that it is uh, 297. So this is where I got that hex 129 from. Uh, just as an uh, as a, as a as an a simulation a simulation value. So afterwards, after the program, if you want to let this run, uh, you must actually highlight this or blank this out or comment this out. And the same with that one, comment it out. And those two comments there, or the comment section, remove the two forward slashes. Then it will become part of the program. Good. So. In my previous videos, I have shown, or my video, the previous one, I've shown that this is your start point for a high. That's the formula that we will be using there, and this is the start point for value low. Um, so, as soon as your program starts running, it will, uh, it will come into this while one, it will run into the while one, and as soon as your timer, because I've just made a, I've set up this timer as a starting, here it is, I just started with a setup as this, as soon as it rolls over it will jump and it will actually then go into this interrupt service routine. And then it will test the status, if the status, so if it, if it, is, if it is the first time, we know that the status is FF, because I've set it, at S, uh, at, uh, I've set it as FF before uh, I went into my while one loop. Um, so in actual fact, in the first instance, it will actually jump in here and it will load the SP low value into my timer. Uh, in this case, it will make port B5 actually a zero and it will change the status to say, but this thing was in the zero state. So th this, this three here is basically showing how uh, I load the low value and this three here is showing how to load the high value and also indicate it's either low or it's, or it's either high. Um, yeah, and these, these values SP high and SP low, of course, uh, this is where I've got that from, from that formula of mine. Eh? That's where I got it from. Uh, the previous formula that I've calculated, but here's the formula which I will be using in the, in the interrupt service routine. So, if I, what I'm going to do now is I am going to, let me just bolt this, bolt succeed. I'm then going to go into um, a debugging mode just to show you the time frames. Remember what I've done with this specific uh, time frame of mine. This, um, if I can go to this 129, which is 297 in decimal, it should have been, it should have produced a delay of 29 microseconds, which is high, and 29 microseconds, which is low. So let me quickly show you. Let me go to the stopwatch and reset the stopwatch here. And you will see now that if I run, you will look, if you look at this time frame here, if I run, you'll see the on time, uh, because this is the status indicate it was high. The on time was actually 31 microseconds. So it's a little bit out. Uh, it should have been 29 microseconds, but it is a little bit out. And it is possible then to go maybe to your to your formula and make some adjustment in adjustments in the formula, or maybe make some adjustments here. So it is possible to go and change it slightly to get it more accurate. but. But um, 29 seconds, 31 seconds, it's, 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 it's close by. Um, so let's look at the, let me just reset this timer again, or the stopwatch rather, and let it run. It should be in the low status. As you can see at the bottom here, it's low status. It should have been 71, so it's 73. Again, run about two microseconds out. And as I've said again, it is possible to go and make some changes, slight changes in your formula to get it more accurate uh, if you want it to be more accurate. Um, 
at this stage as you can see I've used just fixed values yeah I used a fixed value and there I used a fixed value and if I use the fixed values then uh, if I go to my Proteus the, uh, then of course if it's if it's running uh, irrespective if you change you can change uh, the, the voltage input it will not make any difference but if I go to my program and I remove the comments there and I put a comment line here and I remove the comments there and I put a comment line here now the program has changed and I'm now activating uh, let me just build it again and now I'm really reading the value from the ADC so let me go back to Proteus and if I I must just stop here and let it run to take the the new the latest program and as you can see uh, it's the, the 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 duty cycle is quite high I'm not going to show you the time frames here because uh, the Proteus together with this um, AVR the pro the, the timing timings are not that that correct uh, this is why I rather check the timing on Atmos Studio uh, simulation than checking it on the scope of Proteus but as you can see if I now change my voltage it means the duty cycle must decrease and there you can see the duty cycle has decreased or if I increase the voltage the duty cycle must also increase which it is doing and yeah this is how it can be implemented in a program this is how what, what the program looks like and you can then use this program if you want to do pulse width modulation uh, in any design. Thank you.